So I wanted to show another example of using block transfers in a way that can give you a variety of different looking maps uh, that are all structurally the same. Uh, but this is just kind of a foundational principle that can be used to essentially create procedural generation. Um, what I have here is an empty project where uh, basically I have this one map and you know I'll even just kind of generate a dungeon. All it's using is the first uh, wall and ceiling tile in the tile A4. So here it's using this set here and it is using the uh, this tile right here which is uh, in tile A5. It is the third tile down third tile down and immediately on the left. Uh, so I'm actually just going to generate a new floor plan here and what's going to happen is we're going to start a game and we're going to run a little bit of code and then transfer into that map. So we'll transfer in right there. And all this code is going to do, first we're going to basically we're going to change the look of the map without actually changing the layout. And how that's going to work, we're going to first uh, create a, uh, select a random x and y coordinate uh, between 8 and 3, basically. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle of that x coordinate times 64, so two tiles wide, and the y coordinate times 160, so five tiles wide, uh, so that's our x and our y, and then our width and our height is going to be 64 by 160, so 2 by 5. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to cache uh, the wall or a uh, file that we have named here called walls, and a and then we're going to cache tile A4, so the same tile set that is being used to actually select the oh sorry wrong one. Uh, so this is the tile here that's being used in this dungeon. We're going to cache this uh, image here, and then we're going to cache this one here called walls. And this is basically a selection of all the walls that we're going to be randomly choosing. Uh, now we want to select the floor tile that's going to coincide with these. I'm oh, sorry, I think I just hit the microphone there. Um, so we also have these floor tiles, and these will actually coincide with those wall tiles. And I've just created a separate image file that has the same layout, so it's uh, eight across and three down. Same with this here. We have eight different wall tiles and three down. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, oh, sorry, after we've um, cached tile A4 and cached the walls, uh, we're going to do a block transfer into tile A4 at x coordinate 0, 0, because that's where this tile is, 0, 0, uh, using walls at the rectangle that we previously set up. So we're transferring from here in this rectangle into tile A4 at coordinate 0, 0. Then we're going to do the same thing with the floor, and so we, since we established these x and y coordinate initially as a random number uh, between 0 and 8 and 0 and 3, uh, we now can multiply that by 32 and 32 instead of 64 and 160, and our width and height will be 32 by 32. Uh, and then we're going to do the same process, but we're going to cache floor and tile A5, and this is actually wrong. X coordinate is th uh, 0, but the Y coordinate is... So this is 0, 32, 64. So this is the tile we're going to be replacing. So 0, 64, A, and R. So what we're doing is we're doing a block transfer from floor into tile A at this rectangle that we've established. And what this should do, we're just going to auto-run this event as soon as we load in, and then we're going to transfer into the map, and what it should do is it should take this map layout and randomly select a wall tile and a floor tile that will coincide with each other and change the layout of this map to be something completely random from those tiles that we've selected. 
So let's just load into the game and see what happens. And now we have this randomly generated map that is using this wall tile and floor tile. And just to show you that it is the same map, as you can see here, there's like these four rooms and then a long corridor that leads to a big room, a slightly bigger room and then a different room here. So let's see if we can find that. So we've got these four rooms side by side and it leads down this long corridor all the way to the left side of the map, which loads into this really big room slightly less big room and then a tiny room on the side here. And if we reload the game and we try again, it will do the same map but with a different wall and floor tile. So if we go all the way over here, again, here's this long corridor. Leads down into this big room here. Slightly less big room and then the tiny room on the side. And we'll reload again, try again. Let's see if we can get a different layout. And yep, yeah, here's a different one. Uh, the wall and floor tile probably doesn't match up very well, but uh, you get the point. So the idea with this is that let's say you wanted to have um, a dungeon that could have a variety of different layouts or room tiles, you could basically do that with this. And you can you can change the parameters so that um, you know it doesn't have quite as wide a selection of tiles to choose from. You can make it a little bit more uh, condensed and you can have, uh, you know, let's say I wanted to have a dungeon that had, you know, a couple of different things to choose from and then I wanted to change that for a different dungeon. I could just create separate image files for like walls one, walls two or whatever and then transfer those in. Uh, and then you can do this as well, where you have a variety of different maps. Let's just create a couple new maps here. Uh, let's go 50 by 50 for each of these. Uh, and we'll generate a new map and generate a new map. Uh, and we'll do one more 50, oh, cheapers, 50 by 50, generate a new map. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we will Let's do a, let's do something here. Uh, we'll do a parallel process event. Mm, no, let's not do it that way. Um, okay, first off, let's start by doing this here. Uh, let's go, okay, so our map IDs are three, five, six, and seven. Uh, let's say we wanna spawn into this map at uh, 1919. So over here, what we'll do is we're going to set up some game variables here. Let's go, uh, we'll call it X and Y and ID. Okay, cool, done. Um, so what we'll do is we will, hmm, oh, that might not work so well. I'm just trying to think of a way to make this work. Uh, you know what, that'll work. Okay, so we'll do a script call. And we'll say rooms is equal to an array. And within that array, we'll keep a couple different arrays, four of them to be exact. And we're going to have the room ID first, so 3, 19, 19. So that's our ID, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate. Uh, let's see, for room five, what do we want to have for that one? Spawn point, let's make it 27 and 24. Oops. Twenty-seven, twenty-four. For map six, let's make it so that the spawn point is nine and 22. Go into here. So 6, 9, 22. And for the last one, map number 7, let's make the spawn point 37 and 26. And so we'll go 7, 37, 26. So there we go. We've established our rooms here. Now let's go uh, game variables at... Oh, I don't remember what the idea is. Let's just say six for now, and then we'll see if we can figure that out. Hold on. Uh, game variable 
So the x coordinate will be 6, the y coordinate is 7, and the id is 8. Uh, so we'll actually, this is a little bit backwards, but that's okay. So uh, here, let's actually go, hmm, z is equal to rand rooms dot size. So what we're basically doing is we're selecting a random value in this array. And now we're going to go game variable 8, which is the ID, is equal to z at 0. So the first value in the random array that we selected. Game variables at 6, that's the x coordinate, is equal to z at 1. And then game variables at 7, so the y coordinate z at 2. So what we've basically done is we've established a random set of rooms. We have uh, selected one at random. We have now uh, chosen our... Uh, now that we've selected that, we've assigned a game variable to the id, the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate. And then when we transfer the map, we will go designation with variables. Map id is id. Map x is x. Map y is y. And let's do one more thing here. Let's set up a transfer between the maps, just something really simple, that will basically run this code again. Um, you know what? Actually, no. Let's not worry about that right now. Um, but now what this should do is we'll actually, it will actually transfer us to a random one of those maps that we just selected. So we load in and... Oh. Bollocks. Okay. Uh, I may have random rooms outside. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? I think I may have. Let me just make sure. Three, five, six, seven. Yep. Okay. Three, five, six, seven. Let me try that again. I know there's an error in the code. I'm just wondering if it's going to do, run the same error. Let's find out. Yep. Okay, so it's trying to find map data that doesn't exist because it's assigned to the wrong one. What did I do wrong here? Rooms dot size? Is it dot size or dot length? Did I mess that up here? I might have. No, rooms dot size, that's correct. Uh, which should get one, two, three, four. So it's a random number between 0 and 3, because there's four values. Game variables at 8, game variables at 6, game variables at 7. For some reason, it's not updating the, value, or the variable properly. And it should be. I don't know why it's not doing that. Um, because basically it's saying that uh, variable 8 is equal to 0. And I don't know why it's doing that. It's probably an obvious thing that I'm just not seeing because I'm half asleep right now. But um, 3, 19, 19, 5, 27, 24, 6, 19, 22, 7, 3, 7, 20. I think that's, that all makes sense. Oh, I uh, have, uh, yeah. That's brilliant. I basically just said, make this a random number, and then I didn't actually say, <sighs> yeah, okay. Rooms. There we go. 
So now we're setting it to an actual value within the array based on a random one. Yeah, okay, cheapers. Okay, problem solved. Here we go. <sighs> New game. And it should load us into a random one of... Yeah. So we're in a random one of those maps now. I think this one here, based on where we spawn in the general layout, this would be... No, it's not going to let me change the... Yeah, because I'm currently playtesting. Uh, but this, I think, would be room 7. So we've got that big room that's kind of got the three forks, and then we go up to here, and it's kind of zigzagging all the way up to there uh, with a random wall and floor tile. And that would, would have been... Yep, yeah, so that was 7, because we spawned in around here. The, the two forks, we went up, zigzagged around, and up to there. And if we try that again... When we load in, we will get sent to another random room with a random wall and floor tile. Uh, this one here, I think, maybe six. It's either five or six. It's definitely not three. And it's a very kind of grid-based map for this one, so let's take a look here. Uh, oh, maybe it was... No, yeah, I think that was... I think that was five. Might have been six. Oh yeah, I think that was six. So let's load it again and see what it comes up with. And I think this is three, because this is the one that's got that long corridor that we saw earlier. Yeah. But once again, random uh, floor and wall and ceiling tile, uh, but in a way that they all kind of coincide. So that is another example of how you can use block transfers to actually change even the look of your dungeons. Now, this on its own isn't terribly impressive, uh, but when you utilize the principles involved in this, you can create some really cool procedural generation with your maps. Um, what, one thing that I've actually been looking into doing is finding a way to actually procedurally generate a dungeon layout in game, not just in the editor, uh, and then use this kind of technique to uh, basically change the layout to be something that matches the theme of the dungeon that I'm going for. Um, but essentially, having one map for every single dungeon in the game, uh, randomizing the layout, and then changing the theme of the uh dungeon to be whatever the theme is that you're traveling to at that point in the story in that game. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. Um, it's, yeah, I, I already gave a video showing how you can um, use cache graphics and block transfers to alter your character sprites, but this is just an example of how you can do it to actually alter your map layouts as well. Uh, and the engine will automatically pick up that you know, okay, these floor tiles and these wall tiles are supposed to appear in this layout and this form. Uh, it's just this is the image that it is using to create that layout. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. I uh, wanted to do something a little bit simpler. Um, pardon the uh, coding error there. That was a little embarrassing, but I guess just you get to see some debugging in action, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, so yeah, hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time.